Today on Art Matters with Mr. Morris, I caught a fish this big. In other words, we're talking about scale. Art Matters with Mr. Morris. Yeah. Welcome back, my artists. When we talk about things being in scale or out of scale, what we're really talking about is the size of one thing in comparison with another. If you say that something looks out of scale, it means that it looks like it's out of size with the things that it's related to. For instance, I've got this little tiny guy, right, the Lego dude, and this little Lego dude, in comparison with me, he's not at the same scale as a human is. He's miniature. He's a smaller scale. When we're learning to draw faces, one of the problems that we run into almost all the time is not drawing things to scale. We tend to make eyes too large. We tend to make noses too small. We tend to make necks and chins non-existent. Looking for how things are in relation to each other, those comparisons, those deal with, well, scale. I have a short video that's going to be talking about our principle of design today, scale. After the video, we're going to be doing a couple different demos together. Today we're going to be talking about the principles of design. Why, yes, epic sounding disembodied voice, uh, you are correct, but we're really talking about the principle of design known as scale. And scale directly affects how proportion works. So to understand how scale works, let's imagine a house. We know a house is normally really big, and we know that if we're comparing ourselves to the scale of a house, we're really small compared to that. But what happens if we take something really small and we show it next to something that's really big, like this apple? This apple is not to scale, and it makes it so it looks like it's bigger than the house. It makes it look kind of odd. And that's the fun thing about scale, is you can make things bigger or smaller than they normally are, and it affects how the viewer sees the artwork. Let's try scale on a face. So you can see right here I have two eyes on this face and one is out of scale from the other one. One's much larger, one's much smaller. And it looks kind of odd. Let's fix that. Now I've fixed in, I'm going to draw on the rest of the face. Scale is one of those places where artists first start noticing that things don't look quite right in their own artwork. Sometimes we draw things too big and sometimes we draw things too small. They're not to scale from the thing that we're actually trying to draw. And this face, it's a lovely face. But you might notice it doesn't look quite right. That's because our eyes aren't that big. It's got giant eyes. So let's bring those back down to scale so that they're equal up with the width of the nose. Now that I've made this other eye on the right side smaller, now you'll notice that when I cover up the rest of the face, it looks a little bit more like a real face. I'm going to show you the other side real quick so you can see that. And you can see how out of proportion, out of scale, that other eye was. That's right, Jimmy. I should probably should tell them about the two figures. So, imagine this. I have these two figures, and they're standing here in this white snowy field. Which one's the adult, and which one's the kid? I'll give you a moment. The truth is, is that either one could be the kid, and either one could be the adult. However, because we drew one larger and one smaller, they're in different scale from each other, we just assume that the bigger one is the adult. But as soon as I introduce something else, like this picture of a cow, that, that's not a cow. A car, that's not a car, it's a car. Once I introduce this picture of a car, then you see, it's too small. The people don't look like they can fit into it. But you know, historically artists use scale all the time to change how we see an image. I think it's time to go on a field trip. This, my friends, is an hierarchical scale. This very ancient artwork from ancient Egypt is called the Narmer palette. And on it, you can see the Pharaoh Narmer. And no, he was not a giant. And no, he was not around a bunch of little people. The artists actually made him look bigger. They changed his scale to show his importance. You see, important people were drawn or depicted very large. And less important people like his followers, they were made really small. Scale made it so the artists could tell us a little bit about who the people were that they were depicting in their, in their artwork. 
Sometimes artists change the scale to make something really small into something really big. This is the Freedom Stamp, and it's located right nearby in Cleveland, Ohio. And you can see it's normally something that's really small, but the artist chose to make it very big. It makes a big impact now. In this case, the artist changed the scale of the elephant to make it look awfully strange. Hey, I think that elephant's name is Harold. Huh, that's funny. Actually, my name is Space. My cousin's named Harold. In this beautiful landscape by artist Thomas Cole, you can see the figures of people, and they're really small in scale to the landscape. I think what Thomas Cole was trying to do was show us how powerful and big nature is in comparison with how small us people are. Well, you people, I'm, I'm a lion. However, if you remember our talks about perspective, well, then you realize that because the car's smaller, it makes it look farther away. It changes the perspective of our viewpoint. Oink. It's kind of like when Eric Livestock interrupts your video by sticking their heads up close. The scale of its head was larger than those people in that car, and it makes it appear as though it's closer to us. And that, my friends, that is scale, one of our principles of design. That's pretty much what there is to know about scale. I mean, things are big, things are small. You can change the size of those things. Sometimes you do it unintentionally when you're learning how to do art. But the funny thing about scale is, it's kind of subjective. You see, it could be that that pig is just really close, but it could mean that that pig is giant. Houston, we have a problem. We're going to need a bigger fence. Questions. Why do I have a picture of the pyramids up? And yeah, we talked about scale, but how can we make sure things stay in scale? Well, one method was actually derived from ancient peoples, and particularly the Egyptians. They used a method called gridding. Here you can see some of their imagery, and their images were actually put together using a grid. That helped keep everything in scale and kept things consistent. On the other side of the planet, the Mayans and the Aztecs and the Incans all used grid systems to actually put their letters into, their symbols into. We still do this today. If you look at this alphabet right here, yeah, it's a wacky, silly looking alphabet, but you'll notice that all letters are about the same height and they're more or less all about the same width. The In Western culture, artists have been using gridding for a very long time as well. Artist Albert Durer used gridding in many of his works. In fact, here is an etching that he created where he shows a type of gridding method that he employed. Artists would take a frame and then they would create a grid in it using rope, and they would put this in front of a still life or a person or the scene that they were going to do. By doing this, it broke a very complex image into many small measurable shapes. In this way, artists are able to recreate something that they see right in front of them and keep things in scale more accurately. Artist Leonardo da Vinci. Wrong Leonardo. There we go. Leonardo also used gridding for many of his artworks. We can see proof of this when restorations have been done. We can actually see the grid lines still in some of the pieces of work that he did. Our studio assignment is going to be making a grid drawing, but first I need to teach you how to make a grid. So let's get started. All right, my artists, today we're going to go over gridding, and it's a pretty basic thing to do, but you have to follow the steps. Before we get started up, though, let's go over our first rule. Know your tools. So if I look at these two rulers, at first they look the same for the most part, but if I really start looking at them, take a look at this. Where the zero starts, it's indented, meaning it starts inside of the ruler's edge. So the zero is not the edge of the ruler, it's rather the mark that's indented a little bit. That's important to know because on this ruler, the zero is the edge. So if I was measuring with this ruler and I was to use the edge, I would get one inch. But if I was to use this one and measure from the edge instead of the indented zero, I would get about an inch and an eighth. So that's just something to keep an eye on with your ruler. Make sure you're paying attention where your zeros are, your ones, your twos. Make sure you're paying attention where the marks are. Rule number two, make small and light marks. 
I cannot stress this enough. If you're making super dark marks, you won't be able to get rid of them. Maybe for this project that doesn't matter, but for projects later down the road, you'll want to be able to erase these lines. So make sure you're doing them lightly. Rule three, you're always going to make sure that you measure at the edge. You're going to take a sheet of your sketchbook paper today and you're going to line up your ruler and you'll notice I'm at the edge. The reason why I'm at the edge is, is making sure that I have this ruler straight. I don't want to have it at like some weird angle. So I'm going right to the edge. I'm making sure it's lined up. And I'm going to, using this edge, measure out one inch increments. I make a little mark for each inch that I see. When you're done, if you're using your sketchbook paper, you're going to have eight marks. Now, you don't have to mark the first one because that's the edge of the paper, and the last one actually goes off the edge of the paper, so you don't need to worry about it. Rule number four, move your ruler, not your paper. Now that I've made my marks on the bottom, I'm going to move my ruler to the top. Yeah, I shifted my paper down, but I didn't turn it, I didn't flip it, I didn't do anything weird. I just moved my ruler straight up. I'm going to show you why that's important in a moment. But first, again, I'm at the edge. I have this little sliver of paper. This is just so that I know, again, that it looks like it's even, looks like it's level. If it looks like it's the same distance here as here, then I'm in good shape. I hold my ruler down. And I make my marks lightly and small. Rule number five, check, 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 line. I'm going to make sure that my ruler is touching the mark I made. I'm going to make sure it's touching the mark I made. I check it. I check it. I check it again. I check it again. I'm holding down on the ruler. And now I'm going to make my line. And that brings us to our last rule today, rule six. Always pull towards yourself. So I'm not pushing the pencil away, I'm pulling it towards myself and I'm making my line. I'm going to repeat rule number five. Check, 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 pull. And now I'm just going to continue this all the way down the paper. You might also be thinking to yourself, Mr. Morris, you just told us to not make the lines dark and you made the lines dark. Yes, I did. This is because I want you to be able to see it on my page. If I do them lightly, you may not be able to see them because this camera isn't always the best. All right, now I've got them on one side. I have half of my grid done. Now I turn my paper and I follow back over the steps. Make small light marks. Line my ruler up with the bottom of the page. I'm going to mark every inch again. All right, so I've made my inch marks. Now again, I don't move my paper. I move my ruler. Of course, I am going to move my paper so you can see what I'm doing. And look at that. Now I have this nice convenient line that I can line my ruler up to. I make sure my zero is lined up and I start back up. And now I'm going to go to my last two rules again. Check, 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 line, and pull towards yourself. Hey, by the way, if you're left-handed, work from the left-hand side over. If you're right-handed, work from the right side over. This is going to make it so that you have good visibility of what it is that you are doing. Remember, accuracy is important. The closer you can get your line to being on the marks, the better off you're going to be. Check, 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 and pull. Earlier I told you to watch out for your ruler as far as where that indent may or may not be. And I also told you to not flip your paper. Let me show you why. So at first glance, I see a nice grid on this one, but if you start looking, you're going to see that everything's kind of skewed. If you look, you can see these lines are not running parallel to the edge of the paper. The reason why this happened is very simple. Check this out. When I measured this side, I used the ruler and I made the one inch marks. Did that the correct way. But then what I did is I flipped the paper around. And if I check at this side, oh, they're also on the correct marks. Here's the problem. The paper was not an exact inch increment. In other words, it wasn't eight inches, it's eight and a half inches. So that half inch ends up right here. Here's the problem. Because I flipped my paper, the other half inch is on this side. They're on opposite sides. See, if I go back to the one I did correctly, you can see my half inch, it's right here. 
And because I moved my ruler up and not my paper, the half inch stays consistent. That's part of the reason why we do that. The other part of it is, again, if you made a mistake and you accidentally included the ruler indent, the same effect can happen. That's why it's very important for us to make sure that we are paying attention to our tool that we're using, and it's also very important for us to make sure we always follow that rule of moving the ruler, not the paper. Recap time. In today's video, we covered our principle of design, scale. We talked about how artists change the scale of things to emphasize other parts and areas. By the way, emphasize, emphasis, that's another one of our principles of design. Another crossover. We talked about how when we're drawing things from reality, drawing them to scale is one thing that's going to help your artwork to really grow and enhance what it is that you're trying to depict. We talked about how for literally hundreds of years, artists have used gridding as a method to keep things in scale. And I showed you how to make a grid all on your very own. My artists, I am proud of you. I'm proud of what you have been doing and all the amazing work that you have been creating. Until next time, please remember, be kind to yourself and keep on creating. I'm Mr. Morris. Have a great day.